Hey guys, what's up? This is Zagaturdy 2744 and today I want to talk about what all went down at WWDC 2011. We're talking iOS 5 in this video with all the updates that they did release and all the news you need to know about iOS 5. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get right into this video. First thing I want to talk about is notifications. And actually notifications were something that was very talked about in the rumors. People were actually looking forward to better notifications on their iOS device. And that is just what Apple did with iOS 5. Basically notifications, you have a notification center. So now you can view all your notifications by simply swiping down anywhere on your iOS device and you are able to view the notification center and view all your notifications that you have missed or not yet received. Um, also, they have it so on your lock screen, you can view the notifications in kind of a scrolling menu, so it offers more information on the lock screen. And then when in a game, we all know how it's really annoying when you're playing a game and a random notification pops up and pauses your game and interrupts your gameplay, because uh, then you oftentimes screw up in the game, and lots of people get mad about that towards Apple. Uh, so what they did is they offered a little animated notification that it'll pop down at the top of your screen not interrupting your game and not pausing your game but allowing you to keep playing without that being annoying in the middle of your screen next update is kind of something new on ios 5 and believe me ios 5 will be a huge os shocker for you guys with all you guys with ios devices um, now it's called a newsstand basically what a newsstand does is it allows you to have a place where you can read your magazines, your articles, and so on. And it's really cool because it's integrated to your home screen on your iOS device. So for say if you're on the iPad and you have a magazine subscription, you can have that right on your iOS device's home screen. But you have like a little section called a newsstand in which you can go through, select your magazines, and read them on your iPad, iPhone, or iPod Touch. Apple actually did a lot of work with Twitter. Um, something that they really decided to do is integrate Twitter with a lot of applications. Now all you have to do is sign into Twitter once on your iOS device and then it is able to interact through multiple applications. We're talking it can interact with camera, photos, as well as maps. So for example, if you're out and you take a picture of a, with your camera um, and possibly you want to tweet this picture. Instead of having to go into an application such as Instagram, you can simply actually tweet it just from that camera application on your iOS devices. So simply by taking the picture, not even leaving the camera application, you can tweet the picture out on your Twitter and you only have to sign in once in order to do this. Another thing it allow you to do is, for example, photos. You can tweet your photos after you have actually stored them on your iOS device. And with the locations of the maps, you can actually send a picture of the map along with your location settings if you do have that enabled on your iOS device. Now on to Safari. And unfortunately, Flash was not released to Safari. I know some of you guys... Uh, we're really excited and you were like, maybe, just maybe, Apple will do something really amazing and enable Flash on their iOS devices with iOS 5. Unfortunately, they did not do that and I don't see them doing it anytime soon. Hopefully, they will get to it eventually, though. Um, there are some pretty cool updates, on the other hand, with Safari. And the main one was called Safari Reader. And basically, what Safari Reader allows you to do, for example, I'm going to state an example here. I'm going to go to MacRumors.com on my iPad. Now, I want to read a certain article, such as WWDC 2011, just that simple article that they posted on MacRumors.com, but I don't want to see all the other junk around it, meaning I want it to be easier for me to read this article and view the images without all the interruptions of ads and other things that aren't on part of that article. So basically, with Safari Reader, you're able to focus on that article only without having all that other junk around it. Um, making it easier for you to read articles as well as newsletters and so on on your iOS device. Um, it also allows you to have a reading list, which basically you can save articles and put it on a reading list for you to read later if you don't want to read that article immediately or maybe you want to check into it later if you're interested in it. And it also has faster tab switching. Basically with tab switching, it'll have uh, some icons at the top basically a toolbar at the top of your browsing, and it'll have the different icon labels, such as in Google Chrome, like if you open up multiple windows in Google Chrome, such as a YouTube window, Twitter, and Facebook window, you can switch in between those as clicking on the top. Safari will now have that where you can click on the top to switch in between tabs, and it'll hopefully make it easier for you to switch in between 
tabs. Now this next update was a real crowd pleaser. You could hear the crowd screaming and clapping. It was one of the things that really, really amazed the crowd and it actually amazed me personally as well and will probably amaze most of you guys viewing this video. Um, now basically what it was is reminders and what's really cool is that it's not like on your calendar for example and you set something and you want it to notify you when somebody's birthday is. We're talking uh, reminders that are integrated with locations. Let's say I'm at WWDC 2011, which I'm not, but let's say I'm there. And when I leave, I have to call my wife, for example. And I'm only 15, so I don't have a wife. Um, but I'm a 28-year-old who's at WWDC 2011, and I walk out, and I'm supposed to call my wife. But before WWDC 2011, I think, all right, I don't want to forget this, or else she'll be really mad. So what I do is I go in to my reminders, I set it, and I set the location services to uh, WWDC 2011, the location. So when I walk out of WWDC 2011 or leave, it'll send me a reminder to call the wife. And it's actually really cool because, like I said, it's location enabled, and it is a really, really cool new feature on iOS 5, and we'll have to see how that works. Um, obviously, it's, it's going to work better with 3G devices with the iPad and the iPod touches that aren't 3G enabled, you're going to have a little bit of problem with this. But for the most part, we're talking iPhones and 3G iPads. Uh, the reminders are really going to be cool for you. Now moving on to the camera integrated on the newer iOS devices such as the iPod Touch 4th generation, the iPad 2, as well as the iPhones. Uh, what's really cool about what they did with the camera is now you can take pictures right on your lock screen. So instead of having to turn on your iPhone, uh, unlock it you know, with the passcode and everything, and then enter the camera, you can go ahead and just turn on your iPhone, click camera icon on the lock screen and take your pictures right from the lock screen. Now, of course, if your password enabled, people will still be able to take pictures through that, but they won't be able to access any of your photos through that, so it'll still keep your information safe. But on the other hand, they'll be able to just click on there easily and take photos more easily. Next thing you're gonna have is pinch to zoom. Instead of having to tap and then have that zoom bar that you scroll in between, you can simply use your two fingers to pinch in and pinch out to zoom right within the camera application. And the next is the coolest thing with camera. Um, what they did with camera is instead of having to download an external application to go in and crop your photos and uh, rotate your photos and so on, you can edit them directly on the camera application that comes on default on every new iOS device. We're talking you can crop, rotate, red eye reduction, and more all on the camera application. Overall, some really cool, nice camera updates. Next thing I want to talk about is the keyboard. And they actually have two new updates mainly for the keyboard. First thing I'm not too fond of, but lots of people are going to find it a lot more easier to type with on the iPad. Now, some of you guys with the bigger hands, um, my hands aren't that big, but if you guys are adults and you have larger hands and you find it hard to possibly type on the iPad, even with the vertical uh, keyboard because your hands are too place far placed together and they oftentimes don't have a lot of room to move around, now all you have to do is split the keyboard and they actually integrate it so you can actually place two thumbs on the space bar, push up on your iPad and it can split the keyboard making it easier for you to type on your keyboard for most people. Now for me, I'm probably just going to stick to using the regular keyboard on the iPad but if you guys want to go ahead and do the splitting, Hopefully, if you have bigger hands, it'll resolve that problem for you. Next thing is text formatting. Let's say if you're sending an email out um, and you have an important word in there, like, for example, if I want to specify YouTube a little bit more, you can do things like bold it, put italics on it, or even underline that word, phrase, paragraph, whatever you want to do. Um, possibly if you're typing out something in notes, if you have a specific category and then things you have for notes within that category, you can bold, underline, or italicize the specific category name, which it makes it a lot easier for you to read, makes it a little bit nicer, uh, look a little bit more professional in an email overall. Now on to the email, and for me personally, I use the iPad for most of my email usage. I don't oftentimes sign in on the computer with email, I just use it on my iPad because I don't have to keep signing in, it's a lot more convenient for me to use. 
Now with email on iOS devices, with iOS 5, you'll be able to search all your messages. So if you're in need to find a specific message from one of your friends, family members, or so on, you can simply scroll up, there's a search bar, and search the message title, name, or whoever it was sent from. Also, if you find inappropriate messages, spam messages, and so on, you can go through and you can actually flag the message. So uh, basically, you flag it as inappropriate, you won't get emails from that person again, and so on. Uh, it also has a built-in dictionary, and this is for everywhere, so I guess it's kind of a keyboard feature. Uh, basically, if there's a word that you don't specifically know what it means, you can go ahead and hold down on that word and actually define that word, and it'll show you a definition of what that word means, which should be useful for all you guys who have to read messages and for people who use bigger words that they don't really understand. The next update in iOS 5, it was actually another crowd pleaser where everybody started standing up, screaming, clapping, yelling, because they were extremely excited. Um, about this new feature and it's basically iOS devices going completely wireless now yes they have wireless connection in them they always have but what we're talking about here is syncing first opening up your device and having to plug it in your computer you no longer have to do that you can now when you buy a new iOS device for example if you're gonna buy the iPhone 5 when it comes out you can take the iPhone 5 right out of the box and you don't even have to plug it into the computer to set up your iPhone 5. You can actually do it right over your network, which is really, really awesome. It eliminates the usage of the sync cable. You can also update uh, firmwares wirelessly through iTunes. You don't even have to plug it into your computer once again. You can also sync your music, apps, movies, TV shows, podcasts, everything on your iTunes library if you want to your iOS device all wirelessly. does not call anymore for the sync cable. Now on to Game Center, and personally when Game Center first came out in iOS 4.0, I wasn't really that excited about it, but recently I've been allowing my viewers to add me on Game Center, by the way it's Guitar D2744 if you guys want to go ahead and do that, um, but ever since I've allowed my users to do that, we were able to play online play in games together all over wireless networks, which was pretty cool and I realized how cool Game Center was. But now with Game Center on iOS 5, I want to go ahead and put it in perspective how many people use Game Center. There are 20 million more Game Center users than there are people who are connected with the Xbox Live network. Now that's really showing the power that iOS devices have and basically what the future of iOS will be in iOS devices overall the iPhone, iPod Touch, as well as the iPad. So basically what's new in Game Center is they allow you to purchase and download applications right from Game Center. Um, and you can also discover your friends through like Facebook, Twitter, and so on. And you also have game discovery in which they can find games that you like based off of your other games, kind of like Genius. This next feature is a very new feature found on the iPhone, iPod Touch, as well as the iPad. Basically what Apple did is they sat around and thought, all right, so if the iPhone has a messaging system on it, why doesn't the iPod touch and the iPad? So what they decided to do is create something called iMessage. It allows you to message between all iOS devices, including the iPhone, iPod touch, as well as the iPad. Um, whether or not you have 3G or wireless, it doesn't matter. You still get to use iMessage. Uh, so what it allows you to do is send messages, photos, videos, contacts, and even group chatting. So if you have a group of people, possibly somebody is using an iPhone in California and somebody else is using an iPod Touch in Indiana and the other person is using an iPad in North Dakota, for example, uh, you can actually go through and connect with all three of those people and have an iMessage conversation on there where you can message, send photos, videos, contacts, and more. Pretty cool, and it's free to use on all your iOS devices. Now, of course, if you have a wireless device only, you'll probably have to be connected with the wireless network. Um, but if you have a 3G device, I'm assuming you can use iMessage anywhere you go. Overall, the Apple says that those are 10 of the 200 new features on iOS 5. I'm not so sure to believe that there's going to be 200 bigger features. I assume that they focused on the big features in the iOS 5 announcement, uh, and then all the other fe features are just little fixes and little things that you'll hardly really notice in iOS 5. Overall, iOS 5 will be coming out this fall. Unfortunately, 
Uh, for the average user, we're going to have to wait till then, and it's probably going to cost a little bit with all these new features in it. We're talking about 10 bucks, like iOS 4.0 was. Um, now, unfortunately, like I said, we're going to have to wait until this fall. If you are an SDK developer, though, you're able to get your hands on it now so you can start developing applications for when iOS 5 does come out. I want to go ahead and thank you guys all for watching my coverage over iOS 5 and overall what happened at WWDC 2011. Please be sure to go ahead and subscribe for more of our iOS devices. Please also be sure to go ahead and visit in the description below. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. If you guys enjoyed this video and got full coverage over iOS 5 and everything you need to know, please be sure to go ahead and thumbs up this video as well as leave your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about iOS 5. Let me know what the coolest feature is that you find and really like on iOS 5. Thank you guys for watching. This is iGuitarD2744.